Hi, this is Matt. So I'm going to show you some virtualization products that you can run on your laptop or your desktop. Um, so why would you want to do that? Um, well, I know that we have virtual machines available in the company. You can go and uh, send some support tickets and get virtual machines set up to run whatever you want to run. Um, and that's all well and good. And we have test environments and development environments doing that. Um, but sometimes it's quite useful to run this stuff locally if you want to try something out um, or if you just need something quickly you can spin up a virtual machine on your laptop or on your desktop without having to wait for somebody else to do it for you um, it empowers you as a developer to be able to do that um, so VirtualBox is um, a technology that's been around for a few years now it's owned by Oracle um, and basically you supply it with an ISO disk image of an operating system that you want to boot um, and it, to get a long story short it does all the rest um, so here's VirtualBox running um, on my Windows laptop I'm showing you this on Windows for a reason um, and that is to show that it's perfectly possible to run VirtualBox and Vagrant as well which I'll come on to later on a Windows laptop um, this is quite an old laptop in fact, it's only got 2 gig of RAM, it's about 4 or 5 years old but even so I can quite competently run a few virtual machines on it. So here we go with um, a virtual machine running just here. There's a CentOS one, CentOS 6.5. Um, we've been using CentOS 6.5 quite a lot recently, experimenting with containers. Um, and I'll show you that it's just a normal Linux box running virtually inside your works uh, your workstation or your laptop if I can remember the password nope let's try again there we go so there we go Linux box 26 kernel CentOS 6.5 with about 8 gig of disk space and it's allocated half a gig of memory there we see so that's VirtualBox it's fairly easy to install a new virtual machine with VirtualBox I'll show you very briefly how that works um, you download an ISO for example this one, this is the one I used, it's the CentOS 6.5 minimal ISO image uh, as you see there you go, CentOS 6.5, 386 minimal ISO, 320 odd meg so I've downloaded that from the CentOS website um, I'm using the i386 version, that's the 32 bit version because this laptop is so old it won't support 64 bit guests um, so configure a new machine, CentOS there we go, it's auto detected the rest. We tell it how much memory we want this machine to have. Let's pick a fairly arbitrary amount. And we create a virtual hard drive. <clears throat> Lots of options which I won't go into too much detail on. And there we go, CentOS configured. Um, we also want to attach a disk, that's the ISO image, which we do like this. I'm running through this very, very quickly just to show you very, very briefly how it works. So there we go. And we're going to start the virtual machine. And there we go. CentOS, that's the CentOS installer. Now, I'm not going to go through how to install CentOS um, because there's plenty of videos out there on the web and instructions of how to do that. It's exactly the same inside VirtualBox as it is. Um, on a real machine um, but I'm just illustrating VirtualBox and what it can do for you so there you have a, an installer running I'm just going to turn this one off so you can use VirtualBox to install whatever you like really um, largely we're using it to experiment with Linux distributions um, but you can freely download ISOs of uh, other Linux distributions BSD, CoreOS, whatever you want to play with um, and it's a pretty powerful tool. Um, however, it's a bit cumbersome. Um, as you saw, I can get it, I, I showed you getting as far as the start of the installer for CentOS. I'd have to go through all the menus and configure my installation by choosing distributions to install, um, setting a root password, setting up networking, 
sending out the packages that I wanted, all that sort of stuff, um, which is okay on a once-off, but um, it can get a bit cumbersome if you're wanting to do it regularly, or if you want to create a machine that's exactly the same as some other machine. If you're doing it manually, it's going to be error-prone. So that brings me quite nicely on to something called Vagrant. So Vagrant is a um, fairly recent innovation. Um, I say fairly, it's been around for about four or five years now. Um, but what this is, is a tool that you can use to make VirtualBox installations of virtual machines that are repeatable and are lightweight and most of all are fast. Um, I mean fast to install and fast to deploy. Um, that's a really powerful thing to have because it means that um, you can share your Vagrant images amongst co-workers um, and you can also configure up entire environments that are similar to perhaps a test or a production environment on your laptop assuming you have enough memory. So let's just install and run Vagrant here. The download uh, for Windows is an MSI file, it's a Microsoft installer file. Um, I've actually already downloaded it because it's quite big. Um, so let's just run through the installation of that. There we go, preparing to install. Off it goes. Install. So, with Vagrant, instead of downloading an ISO file of an operating system, uh, you install what they call a box, so a Vagrant box. Um, and a great way of getting these is this site, vagrantbox.es. Quite clever play on words, Vagrant boxes. Um, here you see there are dozens of different Linux distributions. So there we go. The Vagrant installation has finished. Now, Vagrant has a command line interface. Um, let's see if it's in my path. Right. Yes, it is. There we go. So, Vagrant basically lets you create virtual machines via VirtualBox, um, but without having to step through all the GUI, the, uh, the menus and clicking through and doing all that stuff. Um, it does a whole load more things than that, in fact. Um, you can do cool stuff like creating virtual images and running uh, Puppet or Chef Solo on them automatically um, based on a configuration that you supply in a Vagrant file. Um, oops, so, so the way this works is you add a Vagrant box. So that is, for example, um, one of these boxes on this site, on Vagrant boxes. Um, and then you go and bring up an infrastructure according to a pre-configured um, file. So this uses um, files called Vagrant Files. Oh, I can't do that, can I? This is Windows. Um, one of which I will show you here. And the Vagrant file is basically the definition of um, which machine you are going to use, which box you're going to use, and any um, post installation steps that you're going to put on the machine. Uh, so let's have a look at that. So here we go. No, thank you. This is a very, very basic Vagrant file. It's uh, it's Ruby, and as you can see, most of it is commented out. There's good um, comments, references, and instructions of what to do. And for this Vagrant file that we're going to create, um, we want to use a, a Vagrant box called Ubuntu32. Um, and that's going to be a box that we've downloaded already from here, um, using the Vagrant box add command, which I won't show you at the moment because it takes far too long. Um, so that is, uh, where is it, the Ubuntu32? It's going to have been one of these boxes around here, one of these um, that I've previously downloaded. So there we see config.vm.box equals Ubuntu32 and pretty much everything else is commented out except the network definition which you see here. Um, <clears throat> so this lets you choose if you want to run a private or a public network. Um, another fairly powerful um, feature of Vagrant is that it lets you 
automatically forward network ports um, from your host, that is your laptop, into the virtual machines. So for example here we see that the port 80 on the guest machine that we're about to start up will get redirected to, um, from port 80, 80, 80, 80 on our local host machine. Let's just save that up like that. Save that. Right. <clears throat> so now, given up, I've edited the Vagrant file in this directory, Vagrant Ubuntu 32. If I type Vagrant up, it should bring me up a virtual machine. So here we go. Let's import in the box. This will take a few minutes. But less time than it will take to click through all those options on VirtualBox. And so sometime later, <laughs> it's about about two or three minutes, it's um, finishing the installation of this box. It's uh, setting up the networking, setting up the port forwarding, booting it up. And now Windows Firewall is objected. Okay. So let's let it do that. Oh yes, probably worth mentioning. Uh, to install VirtualBox and Vagrant, you're going to need admin access. Um, if you don't already have admin access, then you're going to have to request it. Um, if you have any problems in getting admin access, then just let me know and we'll try and sort you out. Oh yes, that's a good point. So in order to access these boxes, um, with you can either use the VirtualBox console, as you see here, this is the CentOS box that, we, that I used before. Oops, there it is. Um, that's a console on the, uh, the um, virtual machine. And if you look in the main VirtualBox window, you'll see our Ubuntu box running there inside there um, but you probably want to SSH to it um, now Windows isn't well known for shipping with an SSH command um, so the easiest way to get SSH on a Windows box that I found is to install git um, so I'm going to go and do that now where's my downloads file here we go git 1.9 again that's an install that I've downloaded from um, the git website which is here git scm.com downloads for windows so again I'm not going to download that manually now because it will take forever so we're going to install that uh, yep, off it goes you might already have git or, um, already um, if so then you actually have an SSH command um, just to clarify that, I'll say that again, um, I'm installing git here so I can get an SSH command. How's that getting on? So while git's installing, um, yes we can see that the VirtualBox installation did finish. Right, so git has installed but we need to do one more thing in order to be able to use it sensibly or to be able to use the SSH sensibly um, and that is to add the git directory to our environment path environment so you can get to that on Windows by going to the control panel and opening environment variables and let's find the path there it is so let's edit that it's messy because it's Windows um, but basically we need to add the path of the bin directory and so now with a bit of luck I should have an SSH command on my path I do right so now if I go back to the directory that I put my vagrant file into which was this one and type vagrant SSH I should get SSH'd into that virtual machine. Hey, there we go. So this is the new machine that we've just created. See, it's not been up very long. Um, 
and it's pretty much exactly as you would get if you were installing from an ISO but we just needed to run that one command that vagrant up command um, from the uh, the directory that the vagrant file is in to create that virtual machine so as you can see that's pretty powerful um, what I can do is go and create more of those with just a single command vagrant up and um, there's all sorts of other things that you can do with vagrant so there we go that's a very quick whistle stop um, introduction to vagrant um, and a little bit on virtualbox um, hopefully you found it useful thanks bye bye